Welcome to episode 53 of the Rex Chapman Show with my super dope homeboy from the next town, Josh Hopkins. Hi, Josh. Hey, Rex Everett Chapman. How's it going? You're back. You uh, had a week hi- hiatus, a uh, little family stuff at home. I'm glad you're back. How's the fam? Uh, everybody's doing doing pretty well. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for I'm still here. Uh, yep. Yeah. In Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, it'll be about three weeks. It's a okay. long trip home, but it's been really nice. nice. Uh, and I like I like that you're home in home in your crib, especially for today's episode. Mm, yes, as it turns <laughs> out, um, <laughs> worked well, out perfectly. Yes, uh, we have a great guest. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, big news this week in the NBA: LeBron resigned. Uh, thoughts? For a lot of money. For a lot of money. A lot of money, but I have a question. I mean, I mean it's a lot of money. Was it like two years and 90 some million or something like that? Uh, yeah. I, it just seems like there should be, it, you can't pay he and Stefan enough. Right. Uh, it, it's a shame there's a max, I guess. Right. right. Uh, for him and for Stefan and for, mm-hmm. you know, maybe one or two other players, but. I get it. It's a shit ton of money and it's most money that uh, I get it. But how can somebody else also make that amount? Uh, You know, it's just crazy. Crazy There's no cap on it. You know, at what point does a, does, is there a franchise? Cause it's happened a little bit, but I suspect it'd be baseball where they're like, look, we'll give you this, this and uh, your minority owner, but not a small minority owner of the yeah, I can't do it. Can't do it legally. But yeah. you know, there can be wink winks at for when I'm done playing and what sure. sure. right. Sure. Um, yeah, but just crazy money and good for him. If anybody deserves it, he does. He carries the league at times. And you know, I, I just think about what how lucky we are right now in this moment to have ambassadors of the game like Stephen Curry, LeBron James, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, three guys who have fun, they live life, and they're good guys. Yeah. They're good guys. You know, they're, they're easy to root for, no. I think. Well, a lot of people don't like rooting for LeBron, but I – I know but that's a, that's a result of his greatness in so many yeah. ways. So yeah. much misguided, like like he's taking his talents to Miami. Like oh boy, whatever. Uh, this is episode fifty three. It is fifty three. Um, famous fifty threes in sports. Who's the first one comes to your mind? Daryl Dawkins. Yeah, Chocolate Thunder. Uh, mm-hmm. Played it, played against him. Um, really, there was. Yeah, Mark Eaton. Rest in peace. Played yeah. against them. Yeah. Um, how about yeah. Artis Gilmore? He played wore, against them. He weighed. <clears throat> he wore fifty three with the Kentucky Colonels in the ABA. That's right. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. Uh, Rick Powell had a little flirtation with fifty three. Uh, well, he, he just kind of well, liked the number. He just thinks it's fifty three. Cool Rick Roby yeah. uh, from Rick, Kentucky. Rick Roby. Great. Yeah. Was Don Drysdale 53? He was. He was. was he? Yeah. Uh, I think I remember that because of the um, Brady Bunch episode he was on. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one of uh, my favorite 53s of all time also played against him. James Buddha Edwards. Okay. De- Detroit Pistons. Bad boys teams. Um, anyway. And it's interesting because, you know, I'm a five. And you are a three. And a three. That's right. Ooh. Five and three wow. on the episode. And also, it's cool because we're it's five and three, and our guest is. Oh, I'm having heart palpitations. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get right to it. But real quick, one other thing the New Jersey Nets made a, or uh, Brooklyn Nets made a great acquisition yesterday. Uh, <laughs> they they got, they, they picked up Kevin Durant. Uh, he's back. He, you know what? He's back in good graces. Everybody loves one another and all that until he changes his mind. Yeah. Yeah. So. It'll be fun to see what, you know, <laughs> what they can be if a full season, everyone together. Yeah. You know, uh, Ben's I'm glad there. though. I'm happy that, that, you know, at least, at least publicly, um, there's a, 
there's a good face put on it. And I got to be honest, watching Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving, you know, Joe Harris, Ben Simmons, if Ben Simmons is the best defensive player in the league, like we know he has been before, and he just runs up and down the floor as a point center, that's pretty compelling. Um, so just as a basketball person, I'm happy that KD's back and we know we're going to see KD, uh, play basketball this fall. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. That's, that's a lot of fun before we get yep. to my guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's do a book club segment. Uh, we should. What, did you, uh, what would you read this week that you might pass on to, to the listeners? Nothing, nothing. Oh. Didn't read a, didn't read a thing. That's not, not even the internet. You didn't read the World Wide Web? I did. I did. Okay. I did. But that's not real reading. Yeah, I guess. No, that's not a book. Yeah. So, well, I actually did. What about you? I did nothing. Nothing at all. That's been book club. Okay. Yeah. Hey. What? hey. Oh my all right. So, uh, Josh, today you know who the guest is. Um, I am... Uh, uh very happy to be able to do this and share this experience with you on episode 53 we have josh's all-time football hero pro football hall of famer class of 99 ninth all-time leading rusher in the nfl four-time nfl rushing leader single season rushing record 2,101 yards, five-time All-Pro, six-time Pro Bowler. We welcome Eric Dimitri Dickerson. E.D. <laughs> Not my middle name, Dimitri. Uh, oh, my mother we tried, <laughs> we tried to We try to find everybody's middle name. How are you, man? Thanks for doing this. I'm good. I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm, I'm good. Uh, I'm going to let Josh start. Um, he, he's, <clears> got, uh, he's got quite the story. Eric, man, uh, I don't know how to say it any more succinctly. Like you, I idolized you so much growing up to a point. I have to. I, I lived in LA for over twenty years. Recently moved back, but to Austin. We're both from Kentucky, mm-hmm. and somehow I, I it would see you at these places, like in LA, once in Florida, different places. And you must think there's an army of big goofy guys like me that come up and go, Eric Demetrius Dickerson, uh, born September 6, 1960, Sealy, uh, Texas, Aunt Viola raised you. And it was, uh, you had, and look, there's a, oh, there's a time that. that, that was, that was in Florida at my friend's wedding. You were at a golf oh. tournament, maybe in or, and people couldn't believe you were there because they know, I mean, every, look, see this? Uh, yeah, I like that shirt. Yeah, my buddy <laughs> sent it to me. Everybody thinks of me when they see. I got two more of these guys sent to me. I mean, <laughs> I, you were synonymous with with my name and with with me for all my friends growing up. And one of the crazy things is my other huge, huge. <laughs> that. <laughs> no, look at that. That was. Well, I found it. Uh, you got your ram, I got your ram hat, the original. Yeah, story. I found it. I found you it found in it? the closet. <laughs> so Man, I, cool, uh, I my, my other big hero growing up in Kentucky was Rex Chapman. And now we're like best friends. And I have Eric Dickerson on the pod between both of you. I I, I don't know how to act. I I I'm glowing. I, I, uh, people ask me if I'm pregnant. I, I look so great. I just, <laughs> and, and I would so come nice. up to, to Rex and I'd be like, Rex Chapman, uh, Rex Everett Chapman, uh, October 5th, 1967. <laughs> uh, you know, Wayne Chapman coach. And, uh, and, and here I am with both of you by happenstance of the way things happen in life. Like we didn't get to do you like a week 10 days ago when we were had you scheduled something happen but since I had to come home and uh, spend some time with my mom in Kentucky and we were going through a uh, closet and they were oh, you want to through this and I saw all of these posters and I was like there's no and I enrolled them and I'd like to take you to on a little tour of <laughs> sort of what my 
room would have looked like for my younger years. We got uh, here we go. There's Rex doing this thing. That's a big poster right there. That's a there big poster, right? Of course, you come over here and you got my oh, yeah, my guy. There it is. There There's it is. My guy. Oh, Always yeah, really wow. liked your pen. Look at that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here you are. That's we got a a, even the Colts ago, twin. Man. Oh, look the Rams that. guy. But look at this. This is I met you when I was 14, went to a game in Cincinnati, and my eighth grade girlfriend blew this picture up of us. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Curl. Look at the Jerry Curl and glasses. Jerry Curl. Oh my and, god. Uh, the Alpina, the Alpina glass. 14 year old me was thrilled. <laughs> And uh, this is one of my favorite things. I well, here's this is classic. Oh, that's just, the look, the look at that. that. God, and dude, then we got man, down here. We long. got Rex, Rex, uh, and the cat's Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> there he is out front in his gray suit. This is the. This was great. The Rams sent this to me because they heard what. A, look at that. You can't look get that. that. Look, look, was, at, look at the. Look, look, look at that at curl. That. Look at that curl. <laughs> Johnny Johnson, Nolan Cromwell, loved him. Uh, of course, you, right. Jack Youngblood, and old Vince Ferragamo. Vince Ferragamo, you got it. The only one it. that was signed, they got they got you to sign it. Wow. So, I also wow, that... did have some other interests. Hey, now, 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 <laughs> now, 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 now we're cool cool Go Chris to the right. Breaking. Yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> So I wasn't, you know, I, I was well rounded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit, man, that's so great. Uh, yeah. So Eric, hopefully that that cheers you up a little bit today. I, it, that makes you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I need to laugh. Good. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Hey, all right. I want to get into this a little bit. You found out later in your childhood that you were actually raised by your great aunt and. Around that time, same time, you kind of found your identity uh, on the football field. How those two things sort of, you know, shape you uh, into the man you grow up to become? Well, I found out about um, I was adopted. Uh, I think I was in sixth grade, but I found out a teacher told me. Um, Miss oh. Miss uh, Holiday told me. I forget her name. Miss, she lived right close to us, and. Um, you know, I always had some questions of why my parents are so much older than everyone else's. But, you know, back then, you know, you don't ask the black mom, dad, that, you know, yeah. that you just don't ask that. And so I, when she told me, she said, go home and ask. She, which was, she had me stay after school, after class and say, have you come up? She said, uh, have you seen your mom and dad? I mean, have you seen your dad? I said, my dad at home. She said, no, boy, you're real dad. I'm like, who are you talking about? She said, go home and ask your mom who uh, Richard Seals is. She said, my mother called him Miss Red. She said, that's not your mama. I said, your mom is it's Hella. Said, Why did she tell you that? Why did she tell you well, that? Well, honestly, she did it to be hateful. She really did. She, she was trying to hurt my mother. She was jealous of my okay. mother. Okay. And uh, she liked um, my mother's, at that time, I guess her ex-boyfriend's brother. And, and got it, got she, liked, she liked him. So I went home and asked my mom. And man, and boy, she, she what the hell did she tell you? That's oh, not wow. true. And I'll never forget it. My dad was so calm. He said, he said, he said, it's red. He called my mother red. Her nickname was red. Red, settle down. Settle down. He said, what did she tell you? I said, she told me that y'all are not my parents, that Helen's my mom. You know, y'all adopted me. And the man, and ooh, it just caused a big love for Because my mother, at that my bowel, she called next door. My mother lived right next door. Right, I mean, right wow. next door, like 20 yards. Wow. So she she goes over. She, I mean, she calls and tells her, come over here and tell this boy about it, Richard. Mother came over. I, I remember just the, the screen. I hear the screen door slamming from across, <laughs> across the way. Wow. Came over, what did she tell you? I said, she told, she told me that you my mom. And that, you know, I was adopted, blah, blah, blah. So my mother, my real mother, honestly, was going to go over and kill her. She went, she, went to get the, she went to get a pistol to kill her. And my dad stopped her. But she went over to her house. Cause I, you know, you, I, you could see her house from our house. She went over and beat on her door and told her, bang, bitch, you come out. You don't be telling me, blah, blah, blah. Wow. So it, it caused an uproar. But you know what? Rex, it, it didn't change me. You know, I, it answered the questions. But how man, old were you, Eric? How old were I was, you? Uh, what, are, what are you in sixth grade with? Uh, 12. 12, so, 12 years yeah, old. 11. I, was about, I, was, I was about 11 or 12 years old. It, did, it didn't change anything at all. I mean, I love my parents. I love my dad. I mean, I say that my dad was the best man in the whole world. Seriously, my adopted father and my mother. And then I, it, it kind of answered the questions that my mother was my, my, my sister was my mom. And funny later, because 
you know, she would tell me to do something. I would say, you're not my mama. <laughs> and, she's, and, she, and she would she'd say, Eric, I would go, ooh, I am your mother. Like, she couldn't say nothing. She never, she never, she never told me. Wow. So, but it didn't, wow. it didn't cause anything. And as far as the football, man, I, I love football. Um, my, my, my mom, Viola, she did not want me to play. She, she wouldn't see. And back then they had to have somebody to sign for you to play football. Yeah. She when did you it. do that? When did you sign to play? And, my, and when did you know, oh, I like this. I'm better uh, than everybody. Seventh grade, seventh grade. That was be signed. Matter of fact, my godmother signed. And my godmother lived right in front of us. And she said, I'm not going to do it. She said, go ask your godmother. So I went over and asked my godmother to sign. Her name was, um, we call her Mama Erlene. Erlene Long was her name. I went over and asked her and she said, are you sure? I said, I said yes, ma'am. She said, Red won't sign? I said, no, ma'am, she won't sign for me. She said, you positive? I said, yes, ma'am, positive. So she signed. I'll never forget, my mother was mad at her. Why did you sign that paper? I didn't think you'd sign it. <laughs> so so she, she signed me to play. That's how I got a chance to play. And, you know, from the first time, of my first game, we played the Walla Bulldog. I won't forget, on, on, a, on a Saturday morning, because we supposed to play on Thursday and it got rained out. And I had, I think I had five or six touchdowns. And I, man, I just, I just loved it. I loved it from that point on. I just fell in love with it, yeah. Steph Curry's record-breaking three-pointer, Jason Tatum's buzzer-beating alley-oop, Ja Morant's poster dunk. NBA Top Shot is where the greatest moments from NBA history are turned into officially licensed digital collectibles. NBA Top Shot has evolved trading cards by making it easier to buy, sell, and collect by removing the hassle of grading, shoe boxes, and shipping fees. You can buy or sell moments in a few clicks and access them at any time on your phone or computer. Your collection is always at your fingertips. Start collecting Top Shot moments in any way you want. Collect rookie moments from future stars like Evan Mobley and Kay Cunningham. Collect throwback moments from former NBA stars like Shaq and Allen Iverson. Or collect moments from your favorite team to gain access to exclusive perks. Grab your starter pack today and Top Shot will give you $20 back to start your collection and pick up some of your favorite moments in the marketplace. Go to about.com nbatopshot.com slash bballnews and get in the game today. Athletically, from the time, you know, you're running races in PE, um, were you better, faster, bigger, stronger? Did, when did you bloom physically? Uh, I was fast as a kid, really fast. Like, I could outrun what most of y'all kids my age for sure. And since some of the, uh, as a matter of fact, when I was in seventh grade, I could have run pretty much everyone in high school. Uh, and, you know, I didn't, you know, I, you know, you thought nothing of it, but uh, I'm, I'm going a, I'm to a fast forward a little bit. Matter of fact, uh, when I got drafted, I played this, the St. Louis Cardinals. And speaking of my dad, my real father, you know, when he's cool, um, a guy, Emmett Thomas, Hall of Fame, Emmett Thomas. We played the Cardinals in St. Louis, and, and my friend Roy Green said, hey, Eric, uh, Emmett Thomas wants to talk. He's for the game. This was, this was like we brought that warming up with shorts and stuff. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll talk to him. I'll go over. He said, hey, Eric, he said, I'm Emmett Thomas. Oh, how you doing? He said, I'm from down by your area. I said, really? He said, let me ask you a question. He said, lady who raised you, her name is Paola. We call her Miss Red. I said, yeah. Your dad was named Carrie. He kind of went through my whole history. You know, my grandmother, grandfather. He said, let me ask you a question. If it's too personal, you tell me. I said, yeah. He said, your real dad named Richard Seal. I said, I said, yeah. He said, Eric, I knew it. He said, I know your dad. He said, I know his brothers. He said, man, they were fast. He said, all of them were running back. They went to prayer view. They went to prayer view. He said, man, I knew. He said, I hadn't seen your dad in like you know, 20 years. He said, but when I saw you and I saw the way you run, he said, you run just like them seals. He said, I went back and looked at, looked at, looked at the time you were born. He said, got to be him. I said, it's me. So, boom. That's cool. That's cool. Your DNA is something else. Wow. <laughs> and that's the upright yeah. style like you did, yeah. bro? I mean, yeah, which is, yeah, he, he, I haven't seen before nor since, like, someone run like that. Yeah, he, he, said, he, he said they ran upright. He said they were big, fast. You know, my dad's about six foot two, and his brother wow. was taller. So he said, he said, yeah, he said all of them ran upright, upright. And then, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how I ran. Well, you Designer ran the, jeans. Designer yeah. jeans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you won the 100 in, yeah. in Texas high school. Uh, did you ever think about exclusively going to track? I love track and field. I won 100 and 200. I love it. I mean, love to death. Matter of fact, my son, he's 10, and man, is he fast. Woo! And I'm not just saying it either. I mean, as the old saying, we know speed, no speed. Speed, no speed. Roy Green, speed. no speed. Green, right, Green. Right, you right, know, I know Roy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speed, no speed. Uh, you know what? I wish I, 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 I went out for the track team in college. 
we got went to tra- and, and I was on the track team. But man, I was so homesick that you had to stay for the, the I think the, the Christmas holidays to run track, and I wanted to go home. So I said, you know what? They, they told me I got to just play football. I just you know I just I I I, I didn't run track, and I, I I regret that to this day that I didn't run track. Well, they say all the time, you know, when you were coming out, he's so big, you know, 6'2", 6'3", 225, ran some crazy and won the state. How can he be that fast? I was 12 when you were drafted, and you didn't get all those highlights. I had to stay up, like, Monday. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Half time to see Eric Dickerson highlights, you know, I was like, uh. And they did a game break, which they – and they showed is the fifth game of the season against the Jets. You know the play. Pitcher, I know he played it. Pitcher 85 yard, 85 yard touchdown run. Died. 85 yards. And you you just pulled away. And that, that one defensive back couldn't keep up and was running too fast. And his arms started going like this and he fell down. He looked like he looked like the opening of good times, you know, with reruns going <laughs> <laughs> Going towards the truck. I mean, and I was like, yeah, he's fast, all right. Uh, well, I can tell you a story behind that. Matter of fact, when I got to the Rams, uh, John Robinson, we were we were running plays, and one plays was like a like a toss play, and I was had to follow the guard and tackle, and um, he was supposed to stop, 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 stop. He said, Eric, he said, you can't be jogging, son. I said, Coach, I'm not jogging. He said, he said run it again. So I ran it again, and you know, I did the same, same thing. I'm, I'm kind of giving space, but I'm running. He said, Eric, he said, look, I know you, you're good, but you're just, I said, coach, I'm running fast. I said, I'll tell you what, get out here and try to catch me. So he, he laughed, he, he laughed. So in that game, after that game, when I had the 85-yard touchdown run, he came, after I came to the sideline, he said, I guess you were running fast in practice. So it looked like you were jogging in too. <laughs> so, yeah, so you know, effortless, so. man. You just, whew. A gazelle. Yeah, it, it was it was it was a god given talent. It really was. I, I gotta I gotta ask. Um, you know, from your book, it, it seemed like you're almost done with football before it got started. You and your black teammates weren't treated like your white teammates. You know what what inspired you to push push back? You know, and push for equality in the '70s when there was just this expectation for you to shut up and and play. You know, um, I've always been that guy to stand up you know, for right. And I, it, it didn't make a difference what color you were to me. Mm-hmm. Because you got to understand, I grew up when there was segregation. I went to a black school and the kids were white, kids went to the white school. But we knew the kids because we were in a small town. We all kind of knew each other. So when we got to go to, to the school together, um, you know, we played, we played football in seventh grade, eighth grade. And we got to high school, we got a new coach. Uh, a coach came in from uh, East Texas. Uh, Ralph Harris is his name. And, we, you know, we heard he had never coached blacks before. You know, coached black kids before. And it just kind of started from that point on. I mean, you know, way he would treat us. And, and, and the thing the thing about it is, even the white kids would say it. And they would treat them bad, too, sometimes. I mean, it really was. Yeah. He said, man, this, he said, he's just not right. And, um, you know, I, a couple of times I called him out on it, you know, because I, I quit I quit football my sophomore year. I quit, you know, because all, all the black kids quit. It was, it was a deal where he had us running. It was just so unfair. Just run. And he said, you're going to run until I tell you this enough. And it was all us. It was black. So all of us quit except one guy. Damn. And finally, you know, I got to say that, you know, it's always someone that, that, that comes into your life that that makes a difference. And not, I mean, my parents were the best. I mean, they really I had the best parents. But my mom wasn't, she didn't like football. My dad loved baseball, but he, he wanted me to always succeed. Didn't want me to quit. He didn't like that. I did it, I mm-hmm. quit. So the guy named James Abernathy from a town over, from a town called Brookshire Raw, he loved sports and he, and he was a big sports guy. He came over and they called him Shaq. I saw him pull up and uh, he came to the door. He said, "Hey, Mr. Dickinson. Hey, how you say? Is Eric here?" And so I said, "Hey, Shaq." He said, "Hey, he said, Mr. Dickinson, you mind if I take Eric and talk to him for a minute?" He said, "Sure, take him and talk to him." So I got in the car with him, and, and we we rode around. And uh, I won't forget. He said, "Hey, Eric, let me ask you a question." He said, "I heard you quit football, man." I said, "Oh yeah, I quit." I said, "Man, that coach is prejudiced. I said, treating us all bad." And you know, he just listened to what I had to say. And so he said, "Eric, let me ask you, let me ask you something else." You ride around here and see this. He said, "What do you see?" I said, "Man, I don't see nothing." He said, "Exactly, Eric. There's nothing here, son." He said, let me tell you something. He said, Eric, go back and play football. He said, hey, that may be your way out of here. He said, and it's funny how people, older yeah. people see things you don't see. He said, Eric, he said, you're one of the best athletes we've ever seen in these parts. I'm a sophomore. I'm like, I mean, I didn't get it. He said, I'm telling yeah. you, Eric. He said, if you don't want to play there, come play in Brooklyn. We'd love to have you. And I said, okay, I'll think about it. So I went back home. My mom said, what did he say? My dad, I said, 
I said, I told him, he said, I shouldn't have quit. You know, go back and play. It could be your way out. My mother said, I don't like football, but I don't like to quit. He said, if you want to go play at Brookshire, I'll have you go. I'll, I'll drive you over there. It was, only, it was only 12 miles away. I'll take you to Brookshire, you know, to school. And I decided to, you know, to stay. But he came, I got to say, Ralph Harris came to each player's house that summer. Because my best friend kind of said, man, is Ralph in your house? I'm like, no. He said, he's on his way, man. He's going to all the play, black players' house and come back and play football. So he came back and we all, we called me and literally we all came back and we played. Now let me say this much. It wasn't one of them feel good stories. Like, oh, we all, you know, you know everything worked out. No, I, I, I still did not like him. I mean, I had arguments. I mean, I won't forget my senior year. He told, cause he, he wanted me to go to the university of Texas and I didn't want to go to UT. I mean, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go or not, but he said, I'll tell the coaches, you're not, you're not interested in going to college. I said, you know what, Ralph? I said, I don't need you, man. I mean, I'm a young kid. I, you know, you, yeah. I wasn't taught to talk to grown ups like right. that. I said, I don't need you. I said, if they want me, they'll come to my house and get me. I don't need you for nothing. And so sure enough, he was telling people I didn't want to come to college, but all the coaches would come to my house. So that's how it kind of it got, got, got worked out and I went to going to college. So he but wasn't make, really going to go to bat for you with coaches, was he? No, no, not, not at all. Not, not, and that not, was not the even. only way at the time. It was really kind of the only way to, to be recruited. Wasn't it, it was through, through your head coach. I mean, through yeah. your, your head coach could push you or he could, he could see. Right. But the problem was, the only problem, I guess, for, it was good for me. And I always say, I mean, God got a plan. You can't change. It. You know, um, the, the thing was, is that I was the number one recruit in the whole nation from a little town in Sealy, Texas, 2,000 people. You know, I still got the book. It was me, Elway Marino, in that order. <laughs> That's the order. <laughs> and so, That's amazing. You know, yeah, he, he, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything about it. But I'll fast forward even about him. You know, um, it was probably 10 years ago. Uh, but he, a uh, guy called me that knows him. And he says, uh, hey, Eric. I said, what's going on, Dan? He said, what's up? He said, you talk? He said, man, I got somebody I want to say hi to you. I said, okay. And he, he guy gets on the phone. He said, hey, Eric, as soon as I heard it, his voice, my heart started beating fast. Oof. And I almost wow. got pissed. I, I, I said, what's up, Ralph? He said, how's it going, Eric? I said, man, I'm good. I said, well, I said, what can I do for you? He said, Eric, I just want to tell you, man, I've seen your career. He said, you had a great career. I just want to say congratulations. Congratulations from the Hall of Fame. And he said, Eric, I want to say something. He said, I was an idiot. And I want to apologize to all you guys of how I treated you guys. And I said, Ralph, I said, man, I said, thanks for saying, I really appreciate you saying that. Because it meant a lot because, I mean, yeah. you know, as a kid, you think yeah. you're wrong, but it showed that I wasn't wrong. I mean, I wasn't put it wasn't right at everything, but I mean, it showed. And, and I mean, he changed, he changed, because the guy he's playing golf was a black guy. <laughs> I mean, they said, they said yes. we were, they were really good friends. Wow. So he changed, but, you know, that, that, that meant a lot to him to say that to me. That's incredible. I mean, That's what a... Truly, you know, most high schoolers, you know, would dream of having grown grown ups, you know, fight, fight each other, to get them to play football, you know, <laughs> uh, whether it was cash, cars or anything they can imagine. But what you don't think about is the empty promises, the, the phone calls in the middle of the night and even threats. How much pressure weighed Ooh. on your shoulders uh, when man, faced with your college decision? Eric? There was so many. You said it was so many threats and man, I'm going to lose my job. I don't forget I. I was, uh, it was a coach from A&M. He came to my house and she uh, came out. He's, it was like midnight. And, and my mother came, woke me up. She said, Eric, I said, huh? I thought something happened. And, and she said, I said, yeah. She said, I said, coach. I said, a coach? She said, he wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay. So I get out, get up. We go, we get sitting on, on the step. I won't forget, we sit on the steps. It was stars in the sky. And he, and he said, he said, Eric, I said, I'm telling you, I'm going to lose my job if I don't get you. You know, and I'm like, and he said, he said, what are you thinking? I say, I'm thinking about going back to sleep. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but, you know, I talked to him, I, you know, and they make you feel bad because, you know, but they, you know, they said it all. You know, yeah. we don't have you, you know, you the guy we need, we missing yeah. you. you. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and it, it, it did cause some problems in my household with my mother because my dad had passed away. But there wasn't going to be no more major problems because, I'm going to listen to what Viola has to say. So, you know, I ain't, ain't going to talk back. But, you know, I wanted to go to OU. That's the school I wanted to go to. I wanted to go to right. Oklahoma. But but she didn't She didn't like Barry Switzer. She said that when they came in, I would commit it to him. She said, that man's a liar, Eric, and I don't trust him. She said, I don't believe him. She said, she said you're a Texas boy. She said, why do you want to go to Oklahoma? You ain't going to live in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you know, I never, I didn't think about it. You know, I didn't think about that. I'm like, I didn't think about it. <laughs> yeah. so, 
but so so but, but that was kind because of, Josh is a couple years younger than I am. But this is around the time I'm, you know, I I've got my favorite football players, Earl Campbell. You know, sure. I'm watching football, all all of that. And here's the best running back that's at SMU. And I and that was always kind of puzzling to me. So why was it SMU? Why did you go there? Well, I'll tell you why I went to SMU. People think we went for the money and all that kind of stuff. No, my, my mother chose that school for me, really. Uh, I committed to, to – then I, then I said, okay, I'll go to a and I'll go to a because they wanted me to stay in Texas. So a and was close, so I committed to a and I didn't really want to go to a and It's funny when you're a kid. I yeah. didn't like the uniform. <laughs> I didn't like that Aggie, the big chin. I didn't like that. And they had no girl. They were had yell leaders. I'm like, yell yeah, leaders? I'm like, what about some cheerleaders? I'm like, oh. I, I mean, I, that was just killing me. So I didn't want to go there for that. But I committed to them. <laughs> Dang, and I won't forget it. We had, we had a barbecue. And my grandmother, my grandparents, cousin, they all came down. And, and my grandmother, my mother, Put me to the side. She said, Erica, let me talk to you. She said, let me ask you a question. I just, my mother, my real mom, my grandmother, and my mother raised me by old. She said, let me ask you a question. She said, she said, don't lie to me now. She said, are you happy with your decision? She said, don't lie. I said, no, I'm not. She said, my mother, my mother said, Erica, she said, but look, I don't want you to go to Oklahoma. She said, you don't want to go. She said, she said, because Ron Ma had been there too, recruiting. She said, right. what about what about SMU? She said, what about what about that? She said, Texas, no. What about that? I said, I like SMU. I said, but man, they ain't, you know, I said, they ain't winning. I said, I said, but yeah, she said, I won't get serious, but you could be the first. Y'all could set something that has nobody has done. They'll be talking about it for years. I said, okay, man. I said, well, she said, I tell you what, she said, do you mind if it's got in Robin Buttecky and from Wallace, you know, uh, uh, oh, not Wallace, um, Rosenberg, Texas, like 20 miles away. I'm like, how about if I call Robin Buttecky and tell him you're interested in going to SMU? I said, okay. So sure enough, she called him. She called Robin Buttecky, and uh, he said, you know, he said, run, my can be here in three hours. She <laughs> 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 be in three hours. But they got to go back to the, the beginning, how she got, how he, how he got to this, is that uh, he came to my house, and when Ron came there, you know, she was like, he's like any other coach, white, white man, you mm-hmm. go to SMU, you know, go to his school. But my mother said, he said, he said, Miss Dickerson, he said, you got anything here to eat? And she said, sure. So they went in the kitchen and he put an apron on and started having my mother cook and oh. some chicken. And I'll never forget. It. And I said, oh, he got me. And yeah. she, 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 that's why she, she wanted me to go to school. She said, I want you. That's why I want you to go to school. She wanted me to go to school. There. I just, so when, when I went down this fast forward, so I went down to, we, we, we left the house doing the barbecue, like, like about five o'clock. The woman, like, like say like 20 miles, rode down, run my, flew in, met with Coach Meyer. I arrived in Buttigieg, and I, and, and I committed to him, and that's a, that's that's how it happened. That's exactly that's how amazing. I got the SMU. Yeah, that's how that's, I got the SMU. Yeah, well, then, then, then the Pony Express, of course, is uh, legendary. You guys really did turn it into something. And of course, then there was a scandal. You both have <laughs> – I thought it was interesting. My two idols have these uh, famous cars from high school, college. <laughs> Eric, Rex is – Rex had this IROC Z. And both Ooh. of our schools went on probation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it had nothing to do with me. That's the kicker. It had yeah. nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, he had that uh, IROC Z, and somehow over the years, it had his initials, REC, on the door, but it became this thing that he had uh, custom put on there, IREX Z. I heard and that. That, that never true. Grew. It never Not happened, true. and it's gained all this momentum <laughs> through the years. People are always like, oh, yeah, the IREC. Well, you've got a car, the gold trans A&M, as it was once called. That, uh, the trans that, A&M. that forever, you know, you were just, you know, mom about, and then it's been almost about 40 years. And then in your book that we're going to get to, uh, you – actually started to talk about it and the money and what happened in the recruiting stuff. Do you want to talk about that car for a second? Well, the car, look, the car was something that I wanted that car, <laughs> you know, and I won't forget how, how we, we, we go down to, uh, to Houston. It was at Leo John again. I used to drive by and sit off the freeway every day. See the, that's, that's a Pontiac dealership. I see the, the, the Trans Am sitting out there and something I'd pull in and I had an old pickup truck that had to start with a screwdriver. So I'd go and look at it. I'm like, damn, I like this car. 
So I won't forget one Saturday, my mother said, my mother, uh, my real mom, my, my mom said, hey, we're going to go down and look at that car here in Houston. I'm like, huh? So yeah, we're gonna, my stepfather, my mother, my real mother's husband, at that car in Houston. And then Leo John said, okay, so we all rode down. My grandmother from Houston met us. My mom and my, my, my adopted mother, Baola, we all there, my grandfather. And make a long story short, sitting there, I saw these like three white men come, you know, they're talking to the, to the sales, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden they said, Take, take it for a ride. So I took it for a drive, man. I like, I loved it. <laughs> and uh, come back and say, okay, it's yours. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I said, it's mine. I said, yeah, it's yours. And mom, I said, mom, I said, I said, don't worry about it. She said, you don't, you don't get no trouble for it. That's what she said. And sure enough, you know, I had the car. And then let me tell you, the, the, that, that, was, that was a Saturday. Monday morning, the NCAA was at my at the school at Sealy High School, come and ask me about that car. You know? Wow! But but I but they they I'm, I'm, I'll just tell you that that car was clean, man, because they couldn't find nothing on it. My grandmother had I you know the story. Basically, I'll just tell you, A and M had my mother, my grandmother paid for the car, not my mother who ran my grandmother. We were confused. My grandmother in Houston, they could afford the car. My grandfather had he was a crane operator. They got a, pretty much a new car every couple of years, a Cadillac. And so they paid for the car and a and gave them the money back for the car cash. And so that was it. And voila. And I, and I didn't find that out. I didn't find that out. So I was in the pro. Yeah, I, I, I can said, imagine. I believe I said, that. How, I said, tell me how I got the car. She said, you, you, you never knew. I said, no. She said, your grandmother paid for the car and a gave the money back for it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's you never had nothing to do with the car. Yeah, it's genius. Yeah, yeah. Genius. Yeah. So I'll tell you, everybody was doing it. That's what's so uh, of course, everybody. of course, and we uh, need to get to the NIL stuff because you've been vocal about it and you've been vocal about it for years. But I, I do want to know if you didn't have to share carries in college, what would you have done? <laughs> well, I'll say this much. I think I think it kept me healthy. And, I, and, and you know, I'm, 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 I'm glad I did now when I look back at my career. But I'd had 2,000 yards for sure. There's no doubt. That, that would have been that have been a given. I mean, think about it. My my senior year, I had uh, when my, my my sophomore, my junior, I had 1,400 yards, some 14, some can in time, and my senior had 16, I think 16, 17, seven yards a carry, and I had 201 carries. That's it. I have a I have a I have a seven yards a carry. I mean, seven yards. you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I would break a long run almost every game. I mean, we played AM. I had 14 carries for 200 yards. And I always tell Herschel, I said, that's my Heisman trophy, you guys. And you know, that's my Heisman. But, you know, they, they were, you know, they were going to give me the Heisman, you know. No, they weren't. <laughs> nah, nah, they weren't. Uh, nah, nah, they weren't going to give it to nah. me. Uh, SEC, all of that. Nah, hey, yeah. uh, it, Eric, it had been like 30 years since you were at SMU before the program, you know, finally felt comfortable bringing you. Craig James and the rest of the Pony Express back to the program. Why did it take so long, and and how do you feel about uh, about it today? Well, you know, I, I think it was wrong because we as key, we had nothing to do with the death penalty. I mean, the death penalty had nothing to do with us at all. I mean, I was gone. I was in the pros five years when they had the death penalty, and they always bring it back to me and Craig. I'm like, I wasn't there. I told them that don't recruit the guy, the guy that that caused the death penalty. I told them don't recruit. I see he's a bad guy. You know, and no one listened to me. I mean, so, you know, and then they recruited him and he he he, t- he basically turned to me. In. Now, the big thing was is that if Ron Meyer would have stayed at SMU or if we'd had a guy like a Ron Meyer, they could have came and took that job that was really ready for it, that death penalty would have never happened. It wouldn't have. Because Ron, you know, he knew that he knew he knew how it worked. He, he knew the system. I think every, like I said, everybody was doing it. But see, we were a smaller school. You don't beat Texas. You don't beat AM. You don't beat Arkansas. You don't beat those yeah. big schools because they get pissed. You know, how, why, why they get all this talent? Because everybody wanted to go to SMU. You were right in Dallas, Texas. And I, I had so many guys say, man, I just loved y'all's uniforms. Man, that uniform was so cool. So cool. With, that, with that big pony on the, on the helmet. You know, <laughs> you know we, had, we had a big pony, a big pony yep. over the whole helmet. You know, and everybody wanted to go there. And, and you think about it, Texas wasn't having that. I mean, we beat yep. them my sophomore year, 20 to 6. They were ranked number two in the nation. And we beat them in Austin. And that Monday morning, once again, NCAA was at school <laughs> doing an investigation. You know, that's just how, like, that's a, you know, I just show you how, you know, how, how one sided it is. Yeah. It's so yeah, funny, too, because it's come so full circle with NIL. Uh, the football program at SMU tweeted out a graphic and said, 
all roads lead to Dallas and it has a gold Trans Am on it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. I saw it. I like it. Yeah. I mean, but yeah, we just did a thing. We just did a thing for it, uh, for Press Review. Uh, me and Craig and Lance uh, last week. I'm excited to see it come out. Uh, it's oh, it's kind of it's kind of like a spoof. It's kind of spoof on on the gold Trans Am, but you know, I think it's great. You know, I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm glad that, that, that they're having the guys come back because me, yeah, I live in California. You know, and I get a lot of calls, man. They don't want us back up, and, like, and I was pissed. I'm like, man, help them. I said, I said, we didn't do anything wrong. We're a bunch of kids. I said, they benefited from what we did. They the school benefited from it. You know. And, um, you know, it's, but now, you know, this time is going on. I mean, just goes to show, I've always said that the kids should get something for playing college football. I, I'm not saying we should make NFL money, nothing like that. But you got to think, a lot of these kids, black and white kids, they didn't have any, they, they don't have nothing. You got to play football, go to class. And that's hard. That's a hard, that's hard. It's like a job. I mean, and you couldn't take a girl on a date, you got no money. I mean, got my, no mom money. To, my mom couldn't afford to send me no money. <laughs> she, she was, she was, a, she was a housekeeper, you know, and that was it. People don't understand. So. I mean, I, I, I got to college and, you know, I didn't ha have much. We didn't have much money, but I had teammates who a couple of them. This was the first time they were able to eat three times a day. Bam. You know? Perfect. And you, so you got that's true. So, um, I mean, and if you got no money to do your laundry, to, to take a girl on a date, to get a burger instead of the you know, cafeteria food, I, people don't understand. And yeah, you're getting your scholarship, but you're also playing your sport every day. The The thing that where I've always had a problem, Eric, is, you know, basketball is one thing, baseball is one, football, it, most, most young men that go to college are playing five years of high level football um, because they're redshirted. Now, most of these guys are not going on to make any money playing the game. No. They've got know. the same – it's a different physical sport. It's the same, you know, brain injuries, the same collisions for five straight years after four years of high school. And, and those guys don't have health insurance. They don't have yeah. any kind of – I mean, it's the same ACL that you tore that has taken four surgeries. They don't – how do you come down on all of that? You know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how people judge something they don't know anything about. Like I always tell them, I said, well, let me, they said, well, you know, what about the other sports? I said, that's great. Basketball. So some schools are basketball schools. Like let's say Syracuse, you know, North Carolina, yeah. those are basketball schools, basketball schools. They, they run it. But I said, but let's look at it like this here. How many, let's say, I'm going to use the, the bit. Let's, use, let's, let's even use North Carolina. Let's use North Carolina. That's, that's, that's really a basketball school. Or they Kentucky. Have a, they, or Kentucky. <laughs> or Kentucky. Or Kentucky. Right, Kentucky. You know, they, they, they're going to they're gonna have, at a, at a basketball game, when an arena is going to fill up how many? 12, 15,000 people? 20, 22, 24. Okay, 24,000 yeah. 24, or 24,000. Okay. And right. let's go to the football. Let's go to the football stadium where you got 60 or 70,000. Yep. That's yep. the big difference. Foot, like, football runs in Alabama, USC, Oklahoma. Yeah. The, the football run, football pays for everything. everything. Football pays for all of it. That's that, that's what that's why that's why the money comes in at. And some people don't understand that. I'm like, hey man, the, the, you, you go when you go to a, a, a swim match, you're not gonna see a hundred thousand people watching somebody swim on a tennis match. It don't work like that. I said it's a football game, tailgating, football. It's, it's uh -huh. all it's all about football. Just like the NFL, <laughs> you know, it's all about they wait for the season to show. It's all about football, tailgating. So I mean, I, it's I a hell. Of, it's a hell of a business model when you don't have to pay your labor. And so, ain't it a hell of? <laughs> ain't, ain't, they call it slavery. That's what they call it slavery. I mean, you ain't paying. You ain't got to pay them nothing. All they they gonna make us all this money. We're gonna pay them some scholarships that the state is paying for, it, and we ain't got to pay them. But 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 the NCAA is making them. Just 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 give me the money. Can't bring, but sit sit it over here by me. So I just I've I've always thought it was wrong. Where do you come out on the NIL stuff that's happening right now? Um, yeah. You know, I, I think it's good. I just think, you know, they've got to get a hold on it. You know, um, you know, some of the schools can't afford, you know, to, to keep up with other universities. But, you know, that I means, you know, the thing is, is that a lot of those schools, they're not going to get those athletes anyway. They're not going to get the, 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 the top recruits. You're not going to, that's just not going to happen. So, you know, I just feel like 
some way you got to compensate the athletes. Now, I, like I don't, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work. But I think the NIL thing, I think it's good for them. I really think it's good for the players. I think it's good for, for the schools. And I, and, I, and my thing is, you should they should get rid of the NCAA. They, they don't need the NCAA. <laughs> I think everybody should. If you want to police, you police your own conference. If you're in the ACC, you police the ACC. If you're in the SEC, you police the ACC. However you want to do it, but you know, because you know, you know what everybody's doing pretty much. You know, just mm-hmm. just 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 do it. I, you know what I, I I've always struggled with is that you know I think back to when I was in college, the guys that I played with in college on the basketball team, but also the guys on the football team, Mark Higgs is one of my homeboys went to uh, from my hometown and, and Mark played in the NFL for a while. Um, but I think back most, you know, most of the guys we played with uh, were on the, or were on the football team or baseball team. They didn't go on to, you know, make money playing in the pros how great would it have been for those guys to be able to have some commercial deals locally, you know, where they can make, you know, knock out some money for four or five years in college. I mean, I don't get what's wrong with that. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, maybe I almost made it like, like it's a crime, like, like, like you're doing something wrong. If, if you get, uh, let's say you get $50 for to putting a tattoo on or something or whatever. I mean, it's, 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 they made, they made, they made, they make it seem like you're doing something like, like it's really criminal. And these right. kids, these are kids that are, have nothing. They have nothing. I, nothing. I think it's fantastic. I really, I really think it's great. Uh, and one thing I got to give SMU credit is, is that they're also having business people m- mentor these young men about the yeah. money and you know, by paying taxes, you know, with taxes. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you this much, honestly. When I got to the pros, <laughs> and I, I'm going to get my check. I'm like, what is, what is this? And where, why, why is my check only like, Four thousand dollars, you know, for making no money. I'm like, where's all this other money going to? And a lot, of, and trust me, still today, young men don't they don't understand that. If you say a million dollars, well, I'm getting a million dollars. No, no, you ain't getting no million dollars. You know, yeah. it's gonna, you might get half of that. You know, and so I think it's great what SMU is doing there. I think, and I hope more schools do that. You know, get people to educate the the, the, the young men and women. You know, of how. You know, you have to pay taxes, you know, and, and how the money's going to be taken out. You know, and you don't want to have to come back and you don't spend fifty thousand dollars. You got a tax bill for one hundred thousand dollars later. True, true story. I was it was my rookie year and uh, I, uh, October 15th rolled around. I hadn't gotten paid at all. I signed my contract back in the summer, but um, I, I get my first paycheck. And well, it was direct deposited. But you remember, Eric, like they, they leave your stub on your on your uh, chair in the locker room. And I came back in after practice, my first uh, paycheck, and I did the same thing. I looked at it and I saw it took out, you know, $10,000 for federal tax and, and st- then state tax. So, and I looked to Del Curry and Muggsy Bogues and I said, all right, so um, I've heard about the tax returns. When do we get this money back? And they, they both looked at me and said, what? And I said, yeah, when do we get this back? And they said, you can't be this dumb. (laughs) 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 We all were. Yeah, I mean, I had no idea and no clue. Yeah, I mean, I guess when I went out to the Rams to show you how it was with them, we got two different checks from two different banks. They were bouncing money. (laughs) We got, let's say you got one from Wells Fargo and you say one from Bank of America. Not, and, and I'm like, okay, I, I thought that was normal. So when I went to the coast and I got one check, I'm like, so when we get the other check. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by Branded Bills, the best place online for premium headwear and apparel. Branded Bills has hundreds of designs available, including our popular state collection, where you can show your pride with hats, shirts, hoodies, and more for all 50 states. Are you a company looking to brand your business? Branded Bills also offers custom apparel options that can meet your brand standards with fast turnaround and shipping. To shop or learn more, visit brandedbills.com today. What was it like on the field for you? I mean, you get to the Rams, 1,808 yards, a rookie record, still a rookie record your first year. Then the second year you're in the league, 2105, still a record. You must have been thinking this is this this is easy. <laughs> nah, it wasn't easy. It wasn't. It, it was. It was. It was not easy. And you know, I, I loved it so much, though. 
uh, Josh, I, I loved it to death, and uh, I want to be I want to be great because that was my, my my dad always taught me. They said, "Son, all that you do, do what you might." Things done by half and never done right. I put a hundred percent into it. I mean, a hundred percent in working out. You know, I had the talent. It was a God given talent, but I worked at it. I mean, I really worked at it. My best friend, he still says today, he said, "If you can work out with Eric Dickerson, he said you better bring a lunch." I mean, because when I was in, when I was young, I was in shape. I could work. I mean, I. I I would push it. I'd push it to the limit. I really did. And so, you know, that first year, you know, because uh, people had the expectation. I was tall. I was too tall mm-hmm. to be a running back. Um, you know, Tom Landry told John Robinson in one of the scrimmages, he said, I think you made a mistake with him. You know, I don't think he's going to last. He runs too high. And, um, you know, and they, they, they didn't think I was as fast because I was big. I was tall. I couldn't be running. I couldn't be running that fast. It can't be that fast. And so uh, we, we scrimmaged the Cowboys, and I won't forget boy. Man, I was so nervous, man. And I was, I, I forgot, I was so nervous. I, I forgot to play. I forgot to play. <laughs> and I had to go to the sideline. They had to sell me down. That's how nervous I was. And I went back in. I had a really good pride, really good game against the boys. Just a, just a, just a scrimmage. And uh, he told, he told John, he said, I think, I think he's going to be all right. And boy, <laughs> to give it to the Cowboys to love to get them back. So, I mean, that, that, that yeah. rookie season, man, was, was great. I mean, uh, it was, it was long. I can tell you, I wasn't used to a 16 game season. Yeah. Uh, around by week 12 or 13, because I, I, you know, I was, I was 225 pounds by week 12, 13. I was down to 212. Damn. I, I was just, I was, I was beat down, tired. I mean, because I didn't carry the ball, and I carried the ball 390 times, and I think I had 51 receptions. I carried the ball over 400 times my rookie year. Damn. You know, as as a rookie, I mean, that's that's the, that's the, that you. I don't think you ever see that again. As, as a you, rookie, you're making up for all those all those you didn't get in college. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 what I, that's what I told you. I'm good with that. I'm good. Yeah, with that. yeah. you know, when yeah. did you have a did you have a, a game though, or a, a, just an experience as a rookie, whether it was in camp or in a game, where you know you did something and you went, okay, it was against whoever or whatever, where you went, this is, it's hard, but it's easier than maybe I thought it was going to be. Uh, two, Dude, that's, that's a good question. I know nobody's asked me that. That's, that's good because I had one in practice where I made a cut. I won't forget. I made a, I still have, I have a picture of it in my, in my office. I don't know how to call it. I made a quick cut and cut a field and I ran the DB and I'm like, man, that was, that felt good. You know, that was a good one that boy. That just shows how fast I was, you know, yeah. because I used to argue with my boy Leroy Irving about, you got to run. I said, Leroy, you can't run me. I said, you can't run me, Leroy. <laughs> You know, I said, <laughs> we argued about it. And 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 going yeah. back to that, that that Jets football game, it was in the Jets. We played the Jets the fourth game of the year. And uh, I won't forget it. I had a, that 85-yard touchdown run. That was, that was a big run. But it was late in the game. The the We played at Shea Stadium. And the lights came on. Like, it was getting – the sun that went down, and then the lights came on top of the stadium. I'll never forget it. And we're about to break the hole. It was a pass play. And Vince Farrell Gummo, he said, Eric, if I don't see anything downfield, I'm coming to you. I said, okay, I'll run a swing route. And as you see, dropped back. All I could see was his head going left to You could see that horn just turning this way, this way. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I could see his arm come over the top. And as I saw his arm, all I thought, man, this is the NFL. I mean, it hit me like that. That is still my biggest moment for me. Oh. That, 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 the, the, I had mean, a catch, I picked up like 20 yards, and I'm like, Man, I'm so excited oh, to be playing oh, pro football. And, and I just, I, I just, I just loved it. That's so great. Do well, you so remember great. because you were such a, such a big, big back, especially then? You know, it's it's the, the NFL's gotten so much bigger. Uh, but do you remember the hardest hit you might have put on some? And do you remember the hardest hit that that you got? You man, you were unbelievable at not allowing people to hit you square and good and you always fell forward it was amazing i mean that there's three more yards right there you, you it, but and you're you know you don't walk around bow-legged seemingly i know you have, pain, <laughs> you have a bad back uh, uh your your mind it is good for all these hits you've taken and all your body how did you manage that and how did you uh did you always avoid hits that way? And what was the hardest you got and the hardest you gave? Well, I'll say as much. Your four is uh, my body. My body is beat up. It is. It's, it's not what it used to be for sure. I mean, I'm in. I mean, I'm in a lot better shape than most guys. 
you know, my memory is not what it was. As a matter of fact, me and my friend Christian Accord was just talking about that this mm. morning. Was hoping because you know, um, what's the name? What's his name? Died from the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, 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 was it uh, Lynn? Lynn Dawson, the court, the quarterback. Yeah, Lynn Dawson. Yeah, yeah, Lynn, Lynn Dawson, Dawson just passed. passed away. And we both said, "Man, I hope I don't have dementia. I hope I don't go out like that. That would just be terrible." We both were talking about it. But when you talk about hits, you know, one of the one of the big hits that, that I remember, I got, I got a couple of them, two in particular. We played the San Francisco 49ers here at home. I think it was my second year in the league, and um, Ryan playing against Ronnie and you know Ronnie Lau was known for putting you on the highlight tape, on yeah. their highlight tape, and not in a yeah. good way. Right. So I was always you know kind of looking, looking, looking for him. And one in this particular day, me and him had gotten into like a fight a couple of plays before, like a, like a fight. So uh, later later in the game, I jumped over a pile, and I still have the picture. I have a picture. It's a great picture. I'm jumping over a pile. And there's all these 49ers, and I'm in. I'm way up in the air, but I'm trying to get back to the ground. It looked like I'm looking at them, but I'm, I see Ryan coming. He's coming fast too. Oh, but I wore a flag jacket. I always wore a jacket. And he hit me in my ribs. Don't get me in my He got me good. And he jumped. He said, I got you. I got you. I said, you didn't get me. No, you didn't. He said, yeah, I did. So I go back to the hole. And then Ben Sparagamo calls it run. But I said, no, dog. He got it. <laughs> he, got, he got to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, he, he, got, he got me good. But in that same oh. game, I ran I ran over him for a third and one to get the field goal right. <laughs> I ran over. Him. And he told me, he said, Eric, he said, man, you said you ran flat over me. He said, my son said, yeah, I never saw you get run over before. <laughs> he said, that's a big back. <laughs> but I just going to hey, show you, you, you get, you get each other. I, it, it reminds me, Ronnie was, a, oof, I can't imagine. But I also can't imagine, you know, it's one thing being an offensive player. Um, can you imagine? because the rules are so different today and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's probably a good thing that they are what they are. Can you imagine being in the middle of your career as a defensive back? And now all of a sudden you can't hit guys like you used to be able to hit them. What kind of, oh, or, or rushing the quarterback or whatever it is that you've got to dial down your timing and your speed and all of that. I, I can't imagine what that's like. Well, I, I don't think they die down the speed. I think they die down how they hit you. Like they can't back yeah. back in our day. They could hit you with a crown of a helmet. It didn't make right. a difference. They could they could they could clothesline you. They can't do all that stuff anymore. And they, and they start teaching it from you know junior high to high yeah. school to college. Now, what back then it was a it was a free for all. It was, it was, oh. it was however you got hit, you got hit. Uh, you played through you played through concussion. I mean, I mean, I won't forget. I got hit in Chicago, and I know I had a concussion. I mean, that guys, we it was me and Michael Smith, Mike Singletary hit. Oh. They played it for a long time in the NFC, in the NFC Championship game. And I went to the sideline, and they said, uh, you okay? I said, yeah, I'm all right. I said, where you at? I said, I'm in Chicago. I said, who are you playing? I'm playing the Bears. What's your name? Eric Dickerson. I don't know how I remember this. They said, what's your date of birth? I said, I have no idea. That's where I, I could have come in. September second, He's good. He's good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. But 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 you know, this all he's all, he, he, he just got a dean. Just you know, he, he's he's okay. You know, that's just that's that shows you how. But I'm I'm glad the way they protect the guys today. But you know, even back then, man, DBs didn't want to, they didn't want to tackle big backs. I mean, because I can think of times where I would just if I had to, I'd run over a defensive back, run over and run around and stiff arm him. Um, but you know, them other them big guys, man, it was uh, you had to deal with them guys. Um, Eric, uh, the league has uh, great some great backs now Derek Henry, Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, why will none of those guys, why will none of those guys or anyone ever break your single season rushing record? Uh, well. I don't think they care the ball enough. They don't. They, they don't care the ball enough. That's that's one thing. I mean, yeah. You saw Derrick Henry got close. You know, he got mm-hmm. close. Um, but you know, like I always say, you know, I got close more than I got close multiple times too. I was in Indianapolis and it was on pace, even ahead of the pace at one point. It's hard to get two thousand. You know, a lot has yeah. to go into it. You got to stay healthy. You know, you, you can't fall behind in the game. It's just so much that 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 goes into, um, you know, playing that position. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's just really difficult. But, you know, maybe one day someone might break the record. I don't know. Maybe, you know, but I just hope I just live a long time and nobody breaks me. I'm alive and I'm dead. I don't <laughs> have at it. You know? it's maybe, been maybe a long my, son, time. Maybe, 
Maybe my son may break it. He, 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 he wants there to play running back. So maybe he'll break it. Will you sign for him to play? You know, do I want him to play? No. But I will most definitely explain it to him. And, you know, because he plays flag football right now. Flag right. football, he runs track. He loves it. Uh, and I asked him, I said, I said, what's your favorite? Uh, he says, you know that, track. I figured, because that's like me. I just love track. Track and then football. Those two he loved the most. Um, but I would sign for him. But I would most definitely explain it to him how, you know, rough it is. And because I tell him, I said, look, you playing flag, son. I see dad play tackle. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Your kids don't. I, I said, look, that's show him a video. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all say how fast you. I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm like, okay, all right. You know, he's just like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay, okay, okay. I said, okay. Well, you, you had you had some great offensive lines. You had Jackie Slater. You had some real – but you never played with a great quarterback. Well, what would you have done if they couldn't stack the box against you? Whew, I say that all the time, man. God. <laughs> man, do you know how frustrated it is walking to the line of scrimmage seeing eight and nine in the box? That no, is frustrating. I yeah, can't yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's so frustrating. You're walking up there and you see the safeties, like we played the Bears in, in the NFC Championship game. You come, The safeties right there behind the – behind the linebacker. I mean, I'm like, dang, if I get past him, I got to deal with him. <laughs> you know? Um, it it'll be, it'll be, it'll be nice. I, 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 the first time I had a chance to play with a, a real quarterback, and Vince was, Vince was the best quarterback I played with, Vince Ferrell got my, my one year. But I played in the Pro Bowl with Joe Montana. And I remember I told Roger Craig, I said, man, you look so lucky. I mean, his passes were so easy to catch. I mean, yeah, if I'd have had a quarterback, wow. Just, I always say, just a piece of quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Ed, Ed, the Rams. Uh, I I worked for uh, the Cronkies in Denver for years, and and the Rams put it together this past year. What do you what's your take on the Rams, and and what's your relationship with the Rams these days? I'm really glad that we won that Super Bowl. We needed that for Los Angeles for the city. Uh, man, I think that Sean McVay has come in done a great job of uh, coaching this football team. He's done a great job of drafting. You know. I'm proud of our football team. That's all that counts. And my thing, you know, my main thing is I want us to win at all costs. I mean, yeah. Like I said, you think I care about a Super Bowl? I want us to win. I want us to win. That's my most important thing. I want my team to win. Uh, before we before we let you go, I want I want to ask what made you want to chronicle your life uh, by writing "Watch My Smoke." Uh, I think you know, that 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 people guys that knew me and, and knew some of my story, just a little bit of it. And every, every night I tell pieces, they'd ask me about certain things. And I'm like, man, Eric, really? I didn't know that, man. They need to do a book, man. They need to do a book. It'll be great. I mean, and it just came to a point where I think mostly for my kids one day, they'll look back and they could have to look at, you know, the, my, my kids, my grandkids, their kids. You know, that was my great, great grandfather. That was my grandfather. Yeah. You know, that was my dad. You know, they can look back and they can read some of the stuff that, some of the stuff that, that I didn't get a chance to tell them. And some of the things, honestly, Rex, I'm sure as time goes on, I'll forget. You know, I'll, yeah. I'll forget a lot of it. You know, and, and that's just that's just life. You know, and have I you found it? Have you found it therapeutic writing it? Yes, I'm telling yeah. you, because it was it yeah. was some of that stuff. I got I got really emotional. I broke down and started crying. Yeah. And some of it talking about my Believe. my father, my relationship with my father. I, I I miss my mom and stuff. And you know, even talking about my 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 college head coach. I mean, I mean, my high school head coach. I mean, how you know, I was I was angry at him, man. Yeah. I was just really angry because. I saw how he did. He did not just me, other players too. And you know, when you leave that, you leave behind. I can't help these other guys. Yeah. I'm just like, man, what did he do when we left? You know. So most definitely, I, it, it it helped me a lot to, to to let stuff go. And you know, people, I tell people, you know, that, that read the book. I'm I'm. It's not. I'm not angry at all. I mean, this is what happened because I think what, what happened is some guy wrote a letter. My wife got it. Said he said that you sounded angry. I said, well, you know, it's funny how anytime a black man starts telling the truth. We sound angry, you know. I said, "But white guy says he don't sound angry." But a Latino guy says he don't sound angry. Asian. He, but when we when we talk about it, I would just tell you, I'm pissed off. <laughs> I, was just, yeah. I, was, I was just saying like that. I'm pissed, but I'm not angry. I'm just telling a story, and my story is my my story is in that book, and it is all true. I I mean, I just gotta say to both of you, this is a crazy day for me 14 year old me would explode <laughs> literally like there'd be chunks of me everywhere but so i i'm just soaking this in enjoying it i know it's coming to an end I, uh who was your eric dickerson you you're my idol who was your eric dickerson oh, that's easy oj oj simpson he was we were trying three. we were guessing six. before the show started and we we 
he was one of the one of uh what two or three. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason I played running back because he played it. Yep, I wanted to play running. He was six foot three. He was fast, you know. And I that 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 was that's that's why I played the position of running back. Where where were you like um, when Gail Sayers was was coming up? Oh I, yeah, I, I was I was little, I was born in nineteen sixty, and he was playing. Right. I was I was a little kid, you know. I was real small. I didn't say I never saw. I saw a little bit of Gail's, a little bit, but I, I didn't see any of Jim Brown. I saw all I saw was OJ. OJ was, was my guy. You crossed Is there anybody over with... today that that you would pay to watch a running back? Uh, yeah. I mean, I like to watch Zeke play. I watch. I like the current. I like. I like uh, uh, the one. I keep I forget his name. Derek. I like Derek Henry. I like him oh. a lot. I, I like him. He's a big. He's a big. Defensive back. So afraid of him. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, I got to make a business decision. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, I got out at LAX one day, and he got out of the, like the Uber next to me, and I was—he had just won the Heisman, and I was just he's like, "Give me a big." He's big. Oh, he's, I'm six three, yeah. and I was—I was like, "He's not a, a defensive end," or I couldn't. Yeah, believe. yeah he's uh, a—he's wow. a big guy, man. He's a really big guy, you know. Matter of fact, uh, when I met him, uh, I stood there. I'm like. Man, I said, you think you're taller than me? <laughs> no, <laughs> you wider than me. You wider yeah, than me for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a big guy, yeah. Eric, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie? God, that's a tough one. I have so many. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I tell you what, I really, I like, well, I like, I like Shane. Okay, I okay. Weapon. I like Shane. I like Shane. I like Shane. Uh, Shane oh, is my, my weapon. Great movie. Uh, God. Uh, God, that's what's the one? Movie. Um Oh God! I think it's Face Off. No, Face Off with Nicholas Cage. Yeah, yeah, Nick yeah, Cage yeah, and John Travolta. Yeah. John yeah. Travolta. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, I, like, I like that, that. too. I like that. I like that movie too. Matter of fact, I got the the money clip that he had. In a, he had two forty fives, and he had a, a money clip in that money. I had that money clip made. I still have it. I've had that money clip for like twenty five years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how much I like that movie. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's great. great. What about what about sitting front row center for any performer or speaker, dead or alive? Jesus Christ! If I can sit in front, I'd right front center. Jesus Christ for sure. You say dead or alive? I would love to 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 mostly hear what he'd have to say. And and if you never had to go back and even just a little bit, Julius Caesar. Because I, I went, to, I just went to Rome uh, in the last couple of months. And uh, we had a guy, we had a tour guide that was so knowledgeable about, you wow. know, I like the Roman Empire, I like the Roman Empire, Roman Empire in, in Egypt. And she was giving me all this knowledge about, about Julius Caesar, how he was loved by the people, how they loved him and why they killed him because he became too powerful and how he came back with, a, with, with an army, you know, and and um, let's say he would conquer, let's say he conquered Southern, say parts of Southern California, where he'd give that to some of his his, his, his army and say, you you take this, you you, you you know, till it, work it, and pay, you know, pay taxes to, to, to the Roman Empire. And that's why the soldiers loved him so much. So I would love wow. to hear you wow. speak. Yeah, that's wow. great. Eric, thanks, man. You got to come back and do it again. Can't thank you enough hey, for man, doing this. No, no problem, no problem. Hey, Josh, man, I got to say, man, thanks for being a fan. I appreciate like that. Uh, God, you're a big guy. God, I didn't, I didn't know, but man, I really, really thank you for, for being a fan. I, I, now, hope I, I, hope, I hope I lived up to your expectations. Well, oh, just know, oh. this is his end game. You'll be doing a pod with him soon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, now at least I won't just walk by and go, Eric Dimitri taking Ann Seeley. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> see that kid. I see the, I see there that it kid is. Right there. All right, Eric. Thanks, bro. All right, thank you. All right, bye bye. Josh, Eric Dickerson. Oh, uh, I mean, How do you feel? I'm gonna. I gotta. You need take, a cigarette. I need some time. Yeah, yeah. I need a cigarette. <laughs> I mean, you and he, like people that know, people that went to junior high with me and then high school, are they? They are. They know what this means to me. They're freaking out. I. I mean, I can't believe. You know, it was so funny that we had to cancel and all I had then was this shirt to wear but then I had to come home and deal with some family stuff and then this week I found all those posts that's insane that that your mom kept them yeah yeah uh they were in this corner I don't think she would have <laughs> where they were you know it was like and I just what a day for me pinnacle pinnacle uh, uh.
well, it made his day, uh, made my day. I, I'm, uh, we're so fortunate. Anyway, uh, that was Eric Dimitri Dickerson, and that was episode 53. Let's do this again next week, Josh. Want to? Yeah, it sounds at, great. At 54, back again next time, the Rex Chapman Show with super cool Josh Hopkins, powered by basketballnews.com.